phantasms. Since all of the other characters have had an episode where they go crazy, the writers decided to somehow have the robot go crazy too. Now see, when I saw the title, I was hoping the crew would encounter actual ghosts in space. Like aliens from some other planet that in our eyes would be exactly what we picture as ghosts. That could potentially have been cool, but that's not what we got. And they don't even necessarily have to be coast to coast. They just be <laughs> regular ones. We begin with Data walking down a corridor through a super wide-angle lens when he runs into Jordy, who talks to him about installing a new warp core. He witnesses some miners hacking through a section of hallway, while in the distance a phone is ringing. When he tells them to stop, he starts making a screeching sound, and they start tearing him apart. When they take off his head, he wakes up. It was all a dream. The, the end. end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That was not planned, by the way. The Enterprise has a new warp core and is prepping to test it for the first time, and Picard is upset because he's been invited to a Starfleet Admiral's Ball. Uh, banquet. I don't think they were going to be dancing. I said ball because it's funnier. Data talks to Jordy about nightmares, saying this is the first time he's had one since he gained the ability to dream. And Jordy says he doesn't think it's unusual because everyone has nightmares. But Data is a robot and is concerned with how he can't stop thinking about it. During their conversation, they are interrupted by Ensign Tyler, who is practically fawning over Geordi. And Data is confused, because Geordi isn't reciprocating, since the writers have literally made that his most prominent character trait on this show. And Geordi says, she's coming on strong, and it's getting uncomfortable. And then Geordi woke up and realized he was dreaming, because what the f <laughs> <laughs> They turn on the new warp core, and everything seems fine. Picard tells them to go to ludicrous speed, but they don't actually move. Jordy works on it, but then they suddenly start losing power everywhere. So Data disconnects the warp coils, and power comes back on. Picard is annoyed, but it's a first test of a new technology, so there's a high chance something will not work as expected. His annoyance didn't make much sense, but was pretty typical for someone who doesn't actually understand the engineering at work. And Jordy says it will take another few hours to get it up and running again. In his quarters, Data stares at Spot for five minutes straight. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Troy enters, and Data points out how absolutely miserable Spot's life must be on that ship, which I had not considered before. Spot has never seen a mouse. He has never encountered an insect or been chased by a canine. Yeah, he could always just throw him into the holodeck. But would the cat be able to sense that things are not real with his enhanced animal senses? Data says he was wondering what Spot was dreaming about, and Troy says that Jordy wanted her to check on him. She tells him he shouldn't be afraid of bad dreams, and even though she admits that she has no idea how his robot brain works, she still gives him advice from a human perspective. So he kicks her out, so he can dream right then and there. I hope he wasn't on shift. And he imitates a human going to bed, which made me really angry. I bet it made most people chuckle. Uh, yes, that idea also made me angry. <laughs> He dreams that he's in 10 Forward, where Worf is eating a piece of cake with a comm badge on it. And over at the bar, Beverly is sucking Riker's brains out through a straw. Which shouldn't take that long, because there's not much up there. Data follows the ringing sound from earlier to the three workers from earlier, who are cutting the cake that Worf was eating, which turns out to be Troy. And Data grabs the knife and cuts into her shoulder. And he wakes up to find Troy, Worf, and Jordy standing over him. They say he didn't show up in engineering when he was supposed to and they've been trying to wake him up for the past five minutes. Jordy goes to check out Data's head, but he can't find anything wrong, and says in reality, they really don't know anything about how he works, and I'm glad it took them seven seasons to reach this conclusion. He suggests that Dr. Sung may have intended stuff like that to happen to make Data more human. And when he asks Data what imagery he saw in his dream, Data says he doesn't want to discuss it yet because that would yield too many plot points too early. Data goes to the holodeck where he is analyzed by Freud, which brings up the question of why there are so many crew members with specific careers on this ship. Why do they need a counselor if they can conjure up all of history's counselors? Speech therapists, teachers, researchers, or even engineers for that matter, like we saw Dr. Brahms. Drum them up in the holodeck and have them do all of the work. Well, I would say in the case of a counselor, maybe having an actual human is still important. But I would say having a good counselor is also important, so they're still failing. The computer could make an amalgamation of all history's counselors and make the best one. I mean, if it was all of history's counselors, Troy would still be part of that, so it wouldn't be that great. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Everything Freud says to data is still very human-based and very stereotypical of Freudian analysis, which I was actually kind of glad to see, because in real life, Freud made a lot of shit up. So for him to try to apply that to an android made sense. And there's some jokes in there about sexual inadequacy and whatnot, and it goes on for too long. And Data finally decides that the entire scene is pointless and exits the holodeck. On the bridge, Picard is contacted by an admiral, who is wondering why Picard isn't at the admiral's ball yet. And Picard fakes some enthusiasm, but doesn't do a very convincing job. They test out the warp core again. But they only go 10 feet before they blow all of the space fuses, and it will take a few more hours to fix it. Tyler gets overly close to Jordy again, and Data notes that Jordy clearly did not talk to her like he said he was going to. Before she recedes back into the subplot background. Jordy gives Data a part to examine, and it reminds Data of the knife from his dream. I would love to see where that thing actually fit into the ship, this giant space knife looking thing. Which they refer to as a brace coil, when it resembles neither a brace nor a coil. And Data seems to see a mouth open up in Jordy's neck, and barely resists the urge to stab Jordy. Data walks away, and hears the ringing again, and Straw Riker demands that Data answer the phone, and Data opens his own body to find it. Turns out to be Freud on the other end, who tells Data to kill them all before it is too late. Jordy comes up and asks him what's wrong, and Data finds that he is still holding the space knife and not a phone. He goes to Troy, who says if he were a human patient, she'd be concerned. But I would think that she would be even more concerned because he's not a human patient. He's a super strong, highly intelligent robot that Jordy admitted 20 minutes ago that they don't understand anything about. Troy says that she thinks he is developing an obsessive interest on his inner workings as his neural net becomes more complex. And he seems very excited that he's going crazy. She tells him she'd like to start counseling him on a weekly basis, and suggests that he stop dreaming for now. Then she gives him back the space knife that he almost murdered Jordy with, and smiles as he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's really a Romulan spy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Picard is still sputtering out why he's not at the Admiral's Ball, and why the ship is currently adrift. He makes his way down to Jordy to do some backseat engineering, much to Jordy's annoyance. But Tyler finally comes in and pulls Picard away. Jordy's thankful and goes to talk to Data, but Data's gone, and so is the space knife. We see Troy walking down the hall thinking about chocolate sundaes, and she seems to sense something behind her multiple times. But realizing how unreliable her Betazoid abilities are, she ignores it. She enters the turbo lift, and right before the doors close, Data forces his way in, raises the space knife, and starts stabbing her. Back in the corridor, Worf complains to Riker about Alexander playing a music program that Riker gave him, which I thought was going to come up again later, but it never does. And they find Data coming out of the turbo lift, and somehow they easily stop him from stabbing them too. They all confront Data later, and he says he was trying to destroy the mouth he saw in Troy's shoulder, as well as a straw in Riker's head. And Picard surprisingly relieves him of duty and confines him to quarters, even though there's no way they could really enforce either of those things, and they should really shut him down. Yeah, it seemed like barely any kind of precaution, given everything that's happened so far. I mean, he actively attacked Troy with a knife. It's not like he said he was thinking about doing something like that. Troy wakes up in sickbay, and after Beverly calms her down, she finds that Troy's skin is discolored where she got stabbed, which she says shouldn't happen. She says she found cellular degradation and in interphasic this or that on Troy's shoulder. Worf takes Data to his quarters, where Data gives him his phaser and tells him to take care of Spot, in case anything happens to Data again. Which has only happened a million times before, so I'm sure it'll never happen again. And then we get some more jokes. Which I actually thought were pretty funny. Tell him he is a pretty cat. And a good cat. Back in sickbay... Beverly says she found a gross parasite thing, her words, not mine, on Troy's shoulder, and they're all over the crew and are spreading. And the one on Beverly's arm is on the outside of her sleeve for some reason, because it's easier to do the effects that way. And when she shows them to Picard and Riker, that would be the point where I would get the f out of the room, but they just stand there. Or at least start clawing at it, trying to get it off. And when Beverly scans Riker and Picard, she finds that they are also infected. At a meeting later, Beverly says the space leeches are feeding off of them, and if they're not removed... We would collapse like a bunch of broccoli! Jordy gives a list of different things they've tried to use to affect the parasites, but nothing has worked because they exist in an interphasic state, 
First of all, what the f*** does that mean? And secondly, how are they interacting with people then, if nothing they're doing is affecting them? And they still have no idea where they came from. Picard suggests that they're connected to the data plot of the episode, but Beverly says she scanned him and didn't find anything. But then they point out that the areas on their bodies where data saw mouths or straws are where the parasites are located. So they go to ask him more about his dreams. Jordy wants to hook Data up to the holodeck and activate his dream program so they can all inception inside Data's head. I didn't realize that would be so easy, and I'm surprised they never tried that before just to see what he was dreaming about. When they enter Data's dream, Jordy says Data will just perceive them as part of his dream, and they hear the phone ringing as they follow Data to tent forward. They see the Troy cake and the Riker straw, and Picard says the mouths that Data saw and the food in the dream are symbols of consumption. They also hear the phone ringing, and Picard suspects it represents an old-fashioned way of communicating. And when he answers it, he hears Freud telling him to kill them all. They suddenly find themselves in Freud's office with Data on the sofa, where Freud tells them that he must represent Data's unconscious mind, trying to warn them about the parasites that he can somehow detect. The miners suddenly bust in and shoot Freud, telling him to be quiet. They move Data's couch out of the way and start working on part of the ship. Jordy recognizes the section as part of the new warp core, and when they try to talk to the miners, the miners say they are their enemies. Typical miners. <laughs> Data gets up to stop the miners, and he makes the high-pitched noise again, which causes them to turn on him. Picard says the noise causes them pain, so Data holds the sound out, causing them to collapse. The dream ends, and Data says to adjust his positronic subprocessor to emit an interphasic pulse or some shit. And it's a good thing that Jordy just happens to know how to do that. Data then gives us a lot of exposition, where he says the miners represented the parasites trying to destroy the ship, and Freud was calling on the phone to warn him about the danger. And the screeching noise represents the interphasic pulse. So they flood the ship with the pulse using Data's head, and the organisms are very neatly wiped out. And I wondered why the pulse had to come from Data. If generating that pulse is something that Jordy already knows how to do, wouldn't it be easier to do it with something else instead of messing with Data's head when they don't even understand how he works? Yeah, so? <laughs> <laughs> and when they turn it on and Beverly's examining the parasites, even though nothing really seems to be happening, she automatically says that it's working. How the f*** does she know what's happening? She is one of the best medical practitioners in Starfleet. Jordy says a new piece of the warp core attracted the leeches since it used a new manufacturing process. And that's also why they couldn't get the warp core to work. But that still doesn't explain where the creatures came from in the first place. And if nobody can normally detect them, they can still just keep infecting people. He says they'll have to manufacture a new piece right on the ship. And it will take six hours, which Picard is happy about since he'll miss the Admiral's ball. Troy visits Data, who apologizes for his actions, but Troy says it wasn't his fault. She shows him a cake of him that she made, or told the replicator to make, and gives Data a knife to cut it with. Now, see... I wondered if she made it herself, because it looks like a handmade cake, and the replicator would have done a way cleaner job. But does that mean that Troy knows how to bake a cake the old-fashioned way? That's not something I would expect from any member of this crew. That was my first thought, but then I realized maybe she just doesn't really know how to use the replicator either, and that's why it came out looking like that. Yeah, that's a possibility too. Or she just said, computer, make a shitty data cake. Data wonders about the symbolism of devouring oneself. And Troy says that sometimes a cake is just a cake. She's lucky that he didn't stab her again. Phantasms. Overall? What a weird-ass idea for an episode. I get wanting to explore Data's dreams more, but that would only be satisfying if we had writers that understood the ideas they were playing with, or that had ideas that were going to go somewhere. I was hoping the first stupid scene with Freud would be all that we would get of him, but unfortunately the writers seem to think that even a super-intelligent robot with access to all the information of Starfleet would still believe everything Freud said, which even today is often considered dubious. I did like the actor playing him though, I thought he did a good job. The explanations and solutions to every single thing in this episode were at least as dumb as anything that has ever been presented in this show. I liked some of the creepy imagery, and there were a few funny moments, like Worf with Spot, but nothing in this episode made any sense on a logical or character level. And what was the deal with Ensign Tyler? That whole subplot didn't go anywhere. And I thought that was going to be, you know, half of the episode. And how many times does Data have to malfunction before everyone realizes how dangerous it is to have him aboard? We've already said that a million times, and now we have him straight up trying to personally murder people, and they still just shrug it off like a one-time thing. 
literally nothing changed in this episode to suggest that it might not happen again, especially if Data keeps streaming. So we have stupid characters that never learn anything, bullshit technobabble explanations for questionable ideas, and a plot that suddenly goes from a Data story to a Parasite Invasion story three quarters of the way through. I'm sensing a high grade coming. <laughs> I gave it a D-, minus, which probably would have been an F if not for the creative imagery, although again, the explanations for that imagery were really stupid. I also gave it a D-. minus. I was kind of hoping that while Data was having nightmares, he would start screaming in his sleep, because that would have been funny. It maybe would have made sense for him to make that screeching noise in his sleep. Picard's Admiral's Ball subplot was out of place in this episode. We had enough jokes with the cat stuff and whatnot. I don't think we needed a whole subplot of Picard jokes. And Tyler's schoolgirl crush subplot was also out of place. It seemed like they were building her up for future stuff, but I would not be surprised if she never showed up again. It would give Jordy an interesting arc to be on the other end of an unwanted relationship. It's like these three threads were all smashed together without thinking about it, because this is the last season and we just need to shove all our ideas in there. The fact that Troy is so heavily influenced by Freud was kind of disappointing in how simplistic it was. The writers just picking the most generic dude ever for that kind of stuff was pretty lazy. And I didn't believe Troy for a minute when she acted like she wasn't scared of Data anymore. I think it would have made a great long-standing arc to have not just her, but a bunch of the non-bridge officers start to whisper about Data and how they don't trust him and how they don't know anything about him, and making him or Picard defend him being on the ship. That would be a courtroom Data episode I would actually like to watch. I agree. The fact that Data was able to pick out specific areas on each crew member for the leeches, but the crew only doing tests on Data didn't make much sense. The fact that he had to stab Troy in the spot he was talking about, and Beverly only discovering the leech by accident in that spot, was ridiculous. And apparently, trying to communicate with the organisms was never an option, even though we've had episodes where something is trying to kill them, and their first action is to try and communicate with it. And I thought that's what was going to happen, because Freud was telling them to communicate with them. They've even done that with the giant crystal galactus thing, and literal rocks. <laughs> Just not in this case, apparently, because they look gross. So where this warp core piece was manufactured, are all of the people in that facility going to turn into piles of jelly because they don't know they're completely infested with these things? Nobody mentioned warning them, so I guess so. And since those leeches were around for quite a while and latched onto people, did any of the crew already lose any vital organs or have parts of their central nervous system dissolve? Nobody seemed that concerned that these parasites were actively dissolving parts of their very being. Nobody felt sick or reported feeling like their insides were melting. <laughs> to me, that seems dubious. And after their first session, Troy told Data, you should probably shut down your dream program just to be safe. But apparently he couldn't do that because he kept having waking dreams. So does that mean that he himself does not have full control over his functions? Because that would be another red flag among the ocean of red flags we have for this character. At least the nightmare of this episode is over. The last thing I'm going to say is... Be quiet! 